neurons move towards the brain and brain controls activities of the body brain does the thinking for us now when the teacher gives you a maths problem you first see the problem then think about it that is the information is getting processed in your brain and then you give the answer so this portion of the brain the outermost portion which is known as the cerebrum takes the decision now there are a few students who solve maths or any analytical problems faster than few other students well this is because their reasoning and analytical power of the brain is more powerful how well this is the outermost part of the brain or the cerebrum and it has many convolutions see so more the number of convolutions more is a person's intelligence level now why is that well this is because if there is more convolutions then there will be a greater surface area and if there is a greater surface area then more cells can be accommodated in the limited space of our head so even if the cerebrum has a greater surface area because of the increased convolutions it can fit in a limited space but if you try and stretch all the convolutions of the cerebrum then it will be as big as the pillow you use to sleep now more the number of uh, convolutions more intelligent a person is so now see the convolutions this upper raised part of the convolution is known as gyri and the inner ridges is known as the sulci and together gyri and sulci together form the convolutions so more the number of gyri and sulci in the cerebrum more is the intelligence level in the person now brain consists of an outer gray matter see it is grayish in color this is a picture of the brain sliced from the top so this this is the gray matter which forms the outer portion it is gray in color because it consists of the cell bodies of the neurons and then there is the inner white matter which is made up of of, of the axons of the neurons and hence it is white now let us see what happened to this man one day this man was walking on the road when a bus hit him his right part of the head was severely injured and because of this severe injury the left side of his body was completely paralyzed now how did this happen well this is because cerebrum has two equal halves and from this situation we can predict that the right half of the cerebrum controls the left side of the body and vice versa the left half of the cerebrum controls the right half of the body and that is why since in this man his right part or the right half of the cerebrum was injured that is why 
the left side of his body got paralyzed. So see, in a man, all the neurons on the right side of the body connect to the left side or the left half of the cerebrum and that is possible because of the junction present between the two halves of the cerebrum. And this junction which connects the two halves of the cerebrum is known as the corpus callosum. So what did we study today? We studied about this part, the outermost part of the brain which is known as the cerebrum. Cerebrum consists of two equal halves which is connected by this junction which is known as the corpus callosum. And we also saw that the right half of the cerebrum controls the left side of the body and vice versa.